What is up, Two Brain Crew? I'm Jay Cohen in Locomotion Fitness here in Charleston, here to talk to you about being a gym owner and all the cool stuff that comes along with it. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about staff meetings, specifically some do's and some don'ts when you are running your all hands staff meeting, specifically is what I'm gonna talk about today. First and foremost, make sure that you know your meeting rhythm. So how often are you meeting with the entire team for these all hands meetings? For us, it's every six weeks. I have weekly meetings with my full-time people. I have sort of uh, as needed meetings with my coaches as well as booking their evaluations and their career roadmap meetings. Um, so make sure that you just take a step back so that you're not doing too many meetings, which isn't gonna serve anyone, uh, and that you have enough meetings to make sure everybody can and stay on the same page. So assuming that you have your meeting rhythm figured out and you have a big all hand staff meeting coming up, what are some things that you should do to make sure that you have an impact leading up to that meeting? The first do that I have is you really have to think about the direction that the gym is headed. There's not a ton of point in talking about the past unless we're doing some reflection and trying to figure out how to double down or not do what we did. However, in my opinion, these all hands meetings are about setting the vision. They're about making sure that people see, hey, this is where we are and this is where we're headed. And that tension between where you are and where you're headed is what drives people to take action, right? That discomfort of not being where you want to be, um, highlighting that is going to help your coaches make moves that push you closer to that vision. So really thinking what is truly most important right now. Then from there, you're going to brainstorm every idea that you can think of that pertains to that vision. So you need to talk about, let's say that the vision is growing group classes. We need to talk about the new schedule. We need to talk about, do we need to hire new coaches? Uh, is it going to be a CrossFit class or some specialty class, right? Tons of different things that you could talk about. Uh, then what you're going to do is chop away 80% of those ideas. The biggest mistake that I made as a gym owner early on was trying to talk about everything. And you'll immediately see eyes glaze over, the meetings go four hours, nobody's paying attention, everybody's just dying to get out of there. And honestly, 80% of that stuff isn't gonna move the needle very far. Remember, 20% of the actions that you're taking are driving 80% of your outcomes. So your job, is to chop away, chop away, chop away until you are truly to that 20% that's gonna drive 80% of those results. All right, the next big do that I have for you is to make sure that you have an agenda done ahead of time. So once you figure out what that 20% is, you're going to lay it out over the course of for us, it's two hours. I don't know what your meeting duration is. For these all hands meetings, two hours seems to be a sweet spot where we can keep everyone's attention, say the things that we need to say, and get everyone out of here so that they can enjoy the rest of their day. I don't know about you, but a lot of my coaches are part-time and I'm asking them to come in on a Saturday and sit here um, we pay our coaches only 15 bucks an hour, but we do pay them for the staff meeting. I know there's a lot of gyms in two brain that do not, but just something to roll around in your head there. All right. Anyway, agenda step by step. This is one we're doing. This is who's responsible for delivering it. Uh, this is how long it's going to take. These are the resources that you need. This is what I need you to do before you get to the meeting. Um, uh, all of that. If you have an agenda and people can look at it in advance, they're gonna be able to contribute a lot more uh, and you're gonna stay on task and focused. A couple of agenda items that I recommend that you do. So a couple more do's here. Uh, do bright spots. So just like you do bright spots with your members, give your coaches a chance to share some bright spots. We usually do one business and one personal or one coaching and one personal. Um, 
Ultimately, if you got a big staff like I do, you might have to set a 90 second timer for each person just so that nobody's talking for 10 minutes and, and really cutting into time. But those bright spots drive community. You know that as the gym owner, you know it and you need community with your staff. So let them share some stuff. Uh, next agenda do is alternate between teaching, talking and moving. So if you're just sitting them down for two hours and dictating, man, that is not going to go so well. Just take yourself back to your days of school or death by PowerPoint or if you were in the military uh, and you know that no one is going to retain any of that stuff. So have a conversation about vision. Go and teach people how you want to coach the clean right and just alternating back and forth between those things another great do is to let your coaches deliver to the rest of the team you as a gym owner are not responsible for providing everything for these meetings if you have a coach that is doing great at affinity marketing have them do a 10 or 15 minute piece on how they are seeing success. If you've got a coach that you get constant feedback that their coach of the, their coaching of the snatch is incredible, have them lead the snatch breakout session. This is going to give your coaches confidence, make them feel important and special. It's going to split up the day again a little bit so that it's not just you droning on and on and on. Uh, it's going to increase the interaction between the coaches. It really is just a, a super important piece of the puzzle to integrate the team. Also, if you can get to a place where like for me, my GM runs the meetings overall, I just come in talk vision and go sit my butt down. That is a, another great, great thing to do if that is in the cards for you. The very last do that I have before we switch over to a couple of quick don'ts is do stay on time. Like we just said, uh, we told people it was gonna be two hours. For us, they're here on a Saturday. It is not cool for you to keep them two and a half or three hours. This was on you to write an agenda and stick to it. So make sure you stick to that schedule so that people don't start to dread coming to those meetings. All right, now just a couple of very quick don'ts. First one, do not ask everyone what you should talk about or when you should meet. This is not a survey situation. This is not a democracy. This is you deciding what is important, what you need to talk about and when you need to do it. Stand up as a leader and take action here. Now is not the time to outsource and to ask people what it would be helpful for them or what they want to cover. Now, you should be keeping your ear to the ground all the time for that stuff. But right before the meeting is not the time to ask because if you don't want to cover something that somebody suggests, that's not going to feel good for that person. The next big don't that I have is do not come in without a plan. Set that agenda. Another one, do not just stand there and talk. If that's your agenda, talking for two hours, throw it out and write a new one. That nobody, nobody wants to come in and listen to you drone on for two hours. Another big, big, big don't is do not bring problems to these meetings. And I know that's counterintuitive. You're trying to problem solve and that's true. And it's okay to mention the problem, but what you need to do is bring a potential solution, lay it out. Then the team can start talking about why is that a good idea? Why is it not a good idea? What are some other potential solutions? If you bring problems, everyone is going to be problem focused, not solution focused. And we need solutions, not more problems. So make sure you come with at least one way to solve whatever it is that you're talking about at this meeting. The last big don't, do not have marathon meetings that last forever. It's just gonna go over everyone's head anyway. All right, guys, I hope those were some helpful staff meeting do's and don'ts. 
As always, thank you for checking out these videos. We love to see you here. We hope that they're helpful. Don't forget, hit that notifications bell so you don't miss the new one. Like this video, leave us a comment. What's one thing you do in your staff meetings that brought a lot of success, that made them a lot better? All right, guys, I will see you next time on the Two Brain Business YouTube channel.